South Africa boasts some of the most progressive medical programs in the field of infectious diseases, especially in the areas of TB and HIV. But how do we ensure that patients living in a rural, resource-poor area have access to this cutting-edge first-world medicine? This is Dr. Madeleine Muller, and in this short presentation, I will show how we found that leadership and mentoring were key elements in setting up a sustainable, decentralized, drug-resistant TB site in the Mwuma subdistrict in the Eastern Cape. We believe that these principles could be applied to any program in a resource-poor setting. Let us set the scene. Mwuma encompasses a beautiful rural area on the eastern coast of South Africa. It has a population of 253,000, of which only 46,000 people are living in the only small town, Butterworth. Although a small town, Butterworth Hospital serves not only the rural area of Mwuma, but patients coming from surrounding sub-districts as the N2 linking Durban to East London runs right through it. It has to deal with everything from minor ailments and complicated chronic disease programs to major trauma due to road traffic accidents and it has a high number of deliveries. As in all rural areas, it finds it challenging to attract long-term doctors who often prefer to settle in larger urban centres. Capacity is always tight and there are times when doctors in the hospital has to make do with a few hands on deck. Now let us look at the requirements of running a DRTB program. Drug-resistant TB is probably the most complicated infectious disease program of all our public sector programs. Patients have to be provided with a challenging combination of numerous tablets for nine months to two years. In South Africa, we have the latest drugs available for treating MDR and XDRTB, including bedaquiline, clofazamine, and linezolid. And this has contributed to our XDR treatment success rate reaching 75% in 2018, a phenomenal achievement. But these fancy drugs need to be closely monitored to minimize adverse events and to prevent further resistance. In 2014, DRTB care was decentralized to ensure prompt treatment closer to the patient's home. Butterworth Hospital was one of the first to run a service, but when the experienced doctor left in 2016, it quickly petered out. In October of 2017, the Mwuma subdistrict decided to start again. Several things had to happen. Firstly, we needed a spot from where to run the DRTB clinic. Butterworth Gateway made available a park home in their backyard with four rooms, one of which was the storage space for the clinic. The nurses pitched in to clear the space and some furniture was borrowed from the clinic and others donated by the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Then we gathered all our bits you need to operate, such as a blood pressure cuff, scale, N95 masks and disposables for taking blood. Butterworth Gateway helped out and AHF donated a hemoglobin meter, a scale and a glucometer. We also needed a couple of high-tech machines. The MDR-TB directorate linked us up with an ECG, sponsored by Janssen, and a Kudawave through Moya. Thirdly, we needed to stock up on the latest and greatest medicines, and for this we had a lot of support from the local regional TB hospital, which provided us with medicines such as bedaquiline and trained the pharmacist on procurement processes. The meds are stored in a makeshift plastic drawer set on wheels, which is kept in the Gateway Clinic Pharmacy and is dutifully wheeled out every Thursday for the clinic. The way we staffed the site is where it became more creative. The local subdistrict TB directorate fully embraced this program, and it was decided that the clinicians from all the facilities in a Mwuma area would rotate through, rather than it just being the responsibility of one hospital. Two nurses from the local clinics rotate through each week to help with booking patients, taking blood, doing ECGs and counselling. Doctors and clinical associates from Tafalofefe Hospital, Butterworth Hospital and the regional hospital take turns to provide the clinical care. Pharmacists from the local hospitals as well as the CHCs provide the pharmaceutical services. The regional hospital social worker visits once a month and the local NGO TBHIV Care has linkage offices that can be used to trace patients. And lastly, of course, you cannot run a program without keeping an eye on it. The regional hospital EDR nurse experts provided the site with its first patient clinic books, registers and a booking book, and we were ready to go. But simply having a building, equipment and staff does not mean you have a sustainable DRTV service. This time we wanted to ensure that the service would keep going, and we have discovered two key elements that made all the difference. 
Firstly, you need one person in the driver's seat of your program. With so many different people helping out and only on one day a week, you need good coordination. But who should be in charge? A lead nurse? Maybe a doctor? The local clinical manager? We found that our local enthusiastic TB coordinator was willing to take the helm. Well established in the area, she ensures that the service happens every week and draws up the roster for the nurses. But to support her, she also has a lead doctor who draws up a schedule for the clinicians and a lead pharmacist that ensures there's pharmacy support every week. Without any of these three roles, we have run into challenges. The second key factor is mentoring. A huge risk to sustainability is the very large turnover of staff and of guidelines. In the past two years, we have seen four different transitions of clinicians that have provided services at the Mwuma DRTB site. Most new doctors, when they start, some of them foreign, have never seen a DRTB patient or even heard of the new DRTB drugs. Add to that the dramatic changes the DRTB program has undergone as new drugs come out and policies change. Your quality of your clinical care of the patient depends on a capable physician. So how do you run a program with inexperienced clinicians? We have found that in the fast-paced world of modern medicine, it is not necessarily your expert doctor that provides the best care, but rather the clinician willing to ask when they are unsure. Having access to an available, knowledgeable mentor makes it possible for even the greenest of doctors to give high quality care. Mentoring can take many shapes and forms. At Butterworth Gateway, we've had a monthly mentoring visit from the local regional DRTB hospital, including a doctor, a social worker, and early on pharmacists and nurses. Less frequently, there are visits from a DOH quality mentor, a family physician DCST, and even an infectious diseases pediatrician. Mentoring includes training each wave of new staff, being available to discuss patients on the review day, usually via WhatsApp, and to provide sets of tools and the newest guidelines as they come out. When possible, we've even arranged for the new doctor to come and spend a day at the regional TB hospital for a quick intensive DRTB insert when they first get started. Over the past two years, Butterworth Gateway DRTB site has provided care for 85 patients, which included nine children. 49 of those have been transferred in, and 36 have already been initiated on site. Most patients receive treatment for MDR-TB, but we have had 15 stable patients with XDR-TB that has collected their treatment. Seven patients had to be referred to the local regional TB hospital with complicated disease. But out of the 49 of which we have an outcome, 42, that is 85.7%, have been successfully treated for their TB. Unfortunately, there are patients that are lost to follow-up, with seven that we have not been able to trace. The success of this Mwuma DRTB site has certainly been a team effort with over 10 different clinicians, 5 different pharmacists and close to 20 different nurses providing services. This has all been held together by excellent leadership and dedicated mentoring, creating a sustainable service to our rural patients. We are often told that DRTB programs fail because clinicians are not interested, but we have found that with good support and access to a dedicated mentor, there have always been clinicians in Mwuma that have been willing to be part of the program and have enjoyed providing services to our drug-resistant patients. We believe that building links and networks with local experts and experienced clinicians can help sustain cutting-edge medicine in rural areas. Rudasa is always keen to hear your stories. Please share with us any exciting projects that you might have in your area. Thank you.